zoom in even more just to get the detail. Wow, fascinating. That was its hold fast. Okay, thank you. All right. That's wild. Come on. <clears throat> Dave, thanks. I wonder if it could be ancient. Is that identified to a living species? Yeah, I think we've think seen so. the we've live seen versions. But Where's the living one? <laughs> Not in this area anymore, it doesn't seem. Yeah, it sounds, but you know, how old is old? I don't think that would stick around for too long. Although what we saw, well, nothing's before. eating it. Yeah, that's true. There's nothing. So there. they've. Well, you, did you sample any of it? We grabbed some of it just to see because it was black looking. Yeah. And uh, you know, it just we didn't uh, pick any up. But be interesting to carbon fourteen that. Yeah. To see if how old old is. We've seen no shortage of. Well, if it's a glass sponge, it's silica, right? Well, it's been it's been uh, manganese is deposited on it, so by definition, it's old. Yeah, I don't know. It was black. I'm not sure. If well, it was that's manganese be, or. I'll bet you. Yeah. Could be. How about a little bet here? Should okay. pick up a piece of that and carbon fourteen it. All right, we'll grab a piece. Not. We've seen it essentially everywhere, so we can. Yeah, well, like there's an seems to be ubiquitous. That was a pretty cool one, though I must say. Yeah, I'll see. There's another one right out in front of us. Yeah. We have a viewer who's commenting that it seems like there are more dead sponges on this expedition than in the last. See, that one's got a stock. See, mm -hmm. you gotta grab a piece of it. What the heck? You got a big move. There's. Are you in, where? Where are you on, on your move? Uh, we're on a move. I mean, we could wait till the end of the move and settle out and grab one then. Yeah, let's keep. They going seem to be everywhere. Yeah, so we can go. Keep going. I'm sure to stumble it. upon more. We'll pass the word the on to the next watch then. Yeah. They look coated. Oh right. Yeah. Which means they've been there a while. Right. Are we going to changing to the guard here? Changing the guard. <sighs> Is this a lunch change or a watch <laughs> change? What watch is, change. I lose all track of time. So 8 to 12 is getting ready to make that change. Thank you for tuning in. and keep sending What's your for questions. lunch, guys? <laughs> <laughs> keep sending your questions to the chat.
When you say a reset, Rennie, that fixes it, what do you mean? Okay, the sonar, it's a Sonardyne specific box. Uh huh. Right, right, right. It's okay. But you guys haven't done the transceiver reset this dive? Oh, okay. Okay. Hello to all our viewers. We've just been doing a watch change, which is why we've been quiet. So we're still kind of getting settled, but this is the 12 to 4 watch back on, but in the daylight hours. If you're just tuning in, we are on the Lu'u Aea Hiki Ike Kiwulanakai expedition, and this is our third dive on this expedition so far. Um, we are exploring the flank of an unnamed seamount, Seamount F. Our last two dives, we were looking at two different seamounts, seamount G, C and G. Um, and we started at about 3,300 meters and have been making our way uh, up a transect. So thanks for tuning in. Looks like we're approaching more coral and sponges than when we left Yeah, you can eight start to see ago. some more of those fallen sponges. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, I know. They're quite large. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a dinner plate. <laughs> they're, they're most likely sponges, uh, which would explain why they're persistent. They're, they're silica. A lot of the corals um, have evidence of dissolution over time. But the glass is less soluble at these depths. Yeah. I expect we might even see some live ones potentially up top uh, if, if they're still persistent in this area. Mm -hmm. Is that yellow on the rock that I'm seeing? Yeah. Can we take a look at that? Yes, let's. Yeah, there's a there's an intact base up on the left upper left corner as well. The yellow yellow. Oh yeah, let's go look at that next here. Yep. I'll s I'll scoot in and see what we can see here. Go for zoom video. You know what I think these are are actually. Uh, are these mucus? I was gonna say one thing, and now I'm now I'm reconsidering that. Um, 
I, I think they might actually be shadows where these giant sponges were attached mm -hmm. since they're somewhat circular. Mm -hmm. And then when the sponge fell off, you know, we see these bases intact. This is the, the shadow that it leaves onto the rock surface. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's also oh. very solid, like black color around mm -hmm. where the circular yellow bit is yep. on that one face. Okay, I'm going to go up and look at that base real quick before we have to get out of here. Do you think, yep. is it like an adhesive that they can create so that they can actually stay attached to the rock that would leave that, or? I, you know, I don't know too much about how they attach to the base. You know, it, so with, with corals, at least, um, sometimes corals can use different minerals to attach. Go for zoom. Versus what they make their skeletons out of. Uh, that one looks really lively. Uh, that might be an anemone. I agree. Oh, yeah. Closed in, yeah. Yeah, go for that it. That could be it. Yep. There you, you know, go. Uh, Battelle Labs in south of Boston tried to isolate the adhesive of barnacles for dentures. Go what? Wow, because it's supposed to be incredibly strong. Because it could strong, strong right? and yeah. can, in a moist environment. Whatever the sponges are attaching to, it doesn't seem to be persistent. Um, it's, it, it's really difficult to date sponges, uh, particularly because you know, they don't leave any kind of concentric uh, features on their skeleton. I was more looking at whether they were coated yep. with manganese. Could also use that as well. Which takes time. Yeah. Certainly are okay, measuring so that in the rock samples we're picking up. Yep. It's a really this long stock there. This is some really neat terrain. What do you think? Oh, yep. Yeah. There we go. I mean, Sponge. we think these volcanoes date back to a single eruption 114 million years ago. Shortly thereafter, things were living on them. Yeah. And then died. And then the question is, do they dissolution? Do, do they dissolve? What happens to the old, 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 super old ones? Mm -hmm. yeah, there's there there are some living representatives of these sponges that we we have seen in the past. I'm trying to pull up a picture of one of them. Um, but they are not as common as what it appears to be here. Wow, so much life on this rock. Yeah, you it's pretty You need to see neat. the coral like growing out kind of in every direction. Yeah. Now, as we were, saw earlier today or last night, the corals tend to prefer the larger boulders. They uh, typically induce faster flows as the water moves around them, uh, resulting in higher food uh, delivery to these animals. We dove on a similar knoll uh, on the last expedition um, in the vicinity of blocking the name of the seamount now. Tamana? It was Tamana. Off the southeast corner, there was this long isolated ridge that was just 
absolutely carpeted with precious corals. Oh, wow. Um, it was a little bit shallower, I think, but we're, we're almost in that range. Haven't seen any precious corals, though, on this dive. It's mostly been from Node and Chrysogorgia dominated coral communities, as well as a few sponges. But we're starting to see, like, all of this stuff here, this is sponge rubble, I think. Oh, wow. Are they fossils? Yeah. Well, we can try and pick some up. Well, what I'm saying is, is... Steve, would you like to go over and pick that up? They've been doing this for 114 million years. I can't believe they are the same guys. Mm. <laughs> we should try and get can we go take a look ahead. at it? Yeah, I left? agree. There'll be more sponge rubble. Yeah. Um, yeah, Steve, do you want to actually make a play for some sponge rubble? I, I think we have we have some time. We're not quite to the top yet, so we'll, okay. we'll keep an eye out for it. But yeah, totally. I'm gonna. I'll try and get ahead so that we have some time to to get it. Yeah. Yeah. This is really. This is the kind of terrain I love to fly through. Yeah. Like you were saying yesterday. Yeah. Totally. Ditto. I'm going to be tempted to like make a meal out of it instead of getting out ahead, but. <laughs> Go for Zoom. One critter leaves the screen, another one enters. Yeah, it's You don't great. have to do anything. It's beautiful. Oh. There's also a fair number of coral predators in this area that I'm noticing. A lot of these aplicoferins, these shellless mollusks. Go wide. They, uh, they graze on the polyps over time, not as fast or as voracious as a sea star, but um, given the sm a number of small colonies as well, it suggests that recruitment is present and that you know this is a pretty vibrant community, has good larval supply, good reproduction. Those are all the little white shells you're seeing? Yeah, smaller colonies, yeah. So the, the very sparsely branching ones, the, the primnodes that branch very low, um, are a species called Norella macrocalyx. And these larger ones, the fans, are um, likely a different species of Norella. But there's also some other small things in there, like some small, bit, small bamboos and other uh, golden corals. This is very cool terrain here. Yeah. We're in sort of a canyon. So there's more over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. So we have a rule that if it smells, you give it to a biologist. If it doesn't smell, you give it to a paleontologist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is really neat. See if I can get a good Argus shot here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be great. We can do lasers off flyby when we reach a nice density, too. Okay. Lasers off. Hold still and light up some of this drama here. You can push in if you want to or frame it up however you like. Stopped crinoids. A lot of these. Uh, Primnoids, though. I like dominate. this primnoid fan right here. Yeah, there's plenty more on. Oh, yeah, the Argus view is really Go great. for Zoom. Coral Garden. Is there a sense of the current direction across this feature? It is pretty chill yeah. in this one place. So far, it's been, it's been quite current-y, but right in here, it's not really a struggle. I'm going to come up and over this and light up like all that diversity at the top there. You can go wide video. So much here. Cool from Noad fan maybe with lots of Associates? Tons of associates. How would I do, Steve? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go for Zoom. Yep. Nice. 
nice. Yeah, oddly, there's like not really any current here, it feels like. Okay, go wide. I'd like to see how. Oh, there's a, a Shall we go skeleton that shows you kind of. Let's go wide on Argus as well. Roger. I'm always amazed at uh, how, you back on how they heading? space themselves out on a What's that, Josh? I'll put you back on your transit heading. So yep. as to not compete that would for be great. the same like, yeah. resources. Yeah, that makes sense. Two six. Two six. Two six zero, I think. Of, yeah. Wow. I, I think it's something similar Is that it? to this. That's it. Two six zero. Yeah. But we're Sorry. not seeing any live. Okay, you're good. Okay. Somewhere there. Yeah. It's old. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. There, no, there's plenty of instances of fossil corals as well. Go oh. for zoom. bamboo coral here these are pretty common this one has actually some really interesting kind of galls here which are probably oh, parasites yeah. that it's calcified over oh, kind of like the corals way of fighting back like a burl on a tree yeah huh. okay go wide it's like entombing their enemies yeah. for all time and then <laughs> <laughs> edgar Allan poe coral yeah seriously <laughs> The ones on trees, bowl makers love to get, <laughs> turn them into beautiful bowls. Yeah, those are so pretty. It'd be a very tiny bowl if we took these from coral. Cut open a few of them before. Usually you find barnacle plates. So the, the plates oh. that make up barnacles will still be in there, but the tissue's all gone. Yeah, onto these sponges. Can we take a, a zoom on of the sponges? Yeah, just yeah, that absolutely. One right yeah. There, just to get a closer is, look at it. Is this this is the sort of rubble you want, right? Yeah. Okay, I will focus on getting this instead of getting zooms. Um, so go for zoom video. See how coated it is. You're looking at the sedimentation there? Well, I'm s assuming this has been there a long time to get black. It's definitely black, yeah. So that Parts. means it's been just like the rock, spray painted. It's a bunch of little things living on it, too. Be interesting to see how thick that coat okay, is. Okay, go wide. Okay, I think we're going to find a lot of sponge rubble here, so I'm going to push out in front. And see if we can get you some. Of course, the second I say that, it's all going to be gone. Uh, we are ending our move in 10 meters, so I could hold it if we want to poke around a little bit while you get out in front. What's this texture here? Um, That's sand coming down. Are we getting pretty That's close? Eh, let's keep moving. Okay. I can get, I can can get the grab the while we're going. Yeah. Go for zoom. It looks like a river, Roger, river Dodger. Flow. Very coarse. Yeah, that's just the manganese oxide coming, spalling off like sand. Bridge now. A little mini gravel, so to speak. Can we okay, move five wide. zero meters bearing two six zero? Well, that's a that's an interesting coral in there. That so that's Thank Achenella. You. It's a bamboo coral. It typically grows in sediment. It has developed these root structures, kind of a modified hold fast that it uses to anchor into the sediment. When we were diving in the Cayman Trough, we came across what looked like a river of dead sponges flowing oh. down slope. We followed it for a kilometer huh. to the base of a massive scarp with living coral living on it. Wow. And they died, they would fall and literally f create this river of dead ones mm -hmm. flowing down slope. It was amazing. Josh, can you come down a bit? There's one right out. there, yeah, dead one. Oh, it looks like we're about to go off the edge of something here. The end of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So Steve, a question for you about these corals. How long do you think these corals have been here? Do you have an idea of well, age or how we estimate that? It, it, they've, we've had coral here since the volcano was formed. <laughs> um, science, uh, how, what do you think about this sponge rubble here? Does that look like a good piece that we're here? Yeah, that would be cool. Grab a piece of that. Okay. Just, I want to see the thickness. Josh, you want to take this grab? Sure. Yeah. There have certainly been corals here, yeah, from the beginning. From day one. We know that because we can visit volcanoes today that have coral communities growing on them, like down near American Samoa, Wailulu. That's a perfect one. Okay. Usually what we find down there are mushroom corals and things that are much smaller, not these big fans, but yeah. There we go. Data, what sample number is this? Jaws. <laughs> this will so be we sample number 59. Do you want a piece of this? or do you want to Pick it up and see what you end up with. Okay. And we'll work from there. <laughs> so, uh, I'll go to grip force six. Let's try that. What are you setting your grip force for? Just the six. Okay. Just give me a little bit of. I could probably set it lower, maybe. Yeah. I think as you try to put it in a box or something, it'll break. Well, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I think as probably you take a piece of it or something. Yeah, Is or as you try to stuff it in, it'll break. Well, see, I don't know how. Which should... end do you wanna? Do you prefer? Base. Well, probably base. the higher up you get the... The base might think? be older, though. So it looks like it's darker at the base. Yeah. Well, we can take both pieces, though. We just cut it in half, right? Yeah. Yeah. I could. Yeah. Well, do we have okay. a large box open anywhere? Do we have a large box open? Um, Only the forward bio box is open okay. uh, for a large one. The other two starboard ones have rocks in them. The, the starboard... Um, aft one it has a flat rock in it we collected that this morning oh, yeah, so we try it. Yeah. okay let's do that starboard aft okay try that let's see if i can kind of stuff it and maybe get a piece in both or something if I... yeah yeah oh. that is very old look at the coating on it yeah okie dokie okay like i say theoretically really really old <laughs> yeah because yeah. this volcano hasn't done a doggone thing after it was created it's not a hot spot. It was an Ready event. for sample salvo? Sure. That's why all the pillow lavas look like you poured molasses on them. Mm -hmm. Lost all of the delicate structure of pillow lavas. Because as they're growing, they, they expand and they create what's called a bread crust kind of texture to them. Mm -hmm. Because they're expanding mm -hmm. as they're flowing. That's all been covered over with this spray paint. That's funny, that's actually bigger than it looks. Just gonna oh. try and use the box to kind of break it in half, maybe? I don't know. It's a little tougher than I was expecting. We'll put it back together up on deck, some glue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have, we've been doing puzzles since we left Fort. <laughs> we just finished in a thousand piece puzzle. Are you in auto XY? I am not. Drop a rock on it. <laughs> you may have to bust it up. I'm really you know, it doesn't have to be a monster piece. Oh, there and yet, you go. here we are. There we go. <laughs> might be just to close it as far as we can kind of thing, and then the top might kind of break off. but Or hold it. It'll close the door and see if it... Yeah. Um, okay, I need to pay attention to Argus for a second here. Sure. Okay, so we need to finish up here. Yeah, right. we're done. Yep, you, okay. can, uh, you can come up. I can play with the box up here down. Okay. 
If you stow the arm and finish, um, finish with a sample tray, I might be able to finish it, actually. Let's just stop the box right there. Okay. There we go. That ain't going nowhere. Okay, we're going back to dive salvo. <laughs> Looks like you have an extra core tube. <laughs> yeah. The core tubes look uh, a little like they got jostled. Well, I come up. haven't got a oh, whole no, lot of yeah, places okay. to use them. <laughs> I think we're okay now. I got plenty of altitude. I'm like 20 yeah. meters off. So there you go. Nicely done. Can't wait to see that puppy. I wonder if that's the base of it right there. Oh yeah, that's a huge one. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, the big concern is Argus could hit the wall. That's why the yeah operator. we're still 20 we're, meters away yeah, from it. We're, we're fine. So that's the concern. Yeah. Come up a little bit. Our delta is getting a little tight. You can see it just in the yeah. left side. The down, ship's down there. moving and it's taking Argus with it. Hercules can maneuver. Argus can only go up, which pulls away Hercules. So, yeah, you have a limited... When you've got to move That's pretty in, funny with you the... You have a uh, limited window to get in and get out with the, sp with the sponge rubble sticking out of the box crash yeah. been there done that yeah not it's advised actually, yeah it's pretty silly yeah the fingers are coming i think we're good like that yeah, yeah i think so too yeah, that's fine Degrees. Put lasers back on, please. Yeah. Come look! Look at amazing number of Martha. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, this know. cliff edge is awesome. Overhang, yeah. Yeah. Well, we cleared it. <laughs> it's fun when there's an overhang. This is an entire raft of those yeah. debris. Oh, yeah. And it can get really gnarly. We were sending Hercules into the entrance of caves and on a vertical wall. <laughs> you have to really know where Argus is. <laughs> We can label, instead of saying head one and head two, you can label them. Yeah, it doesn't persist sometimes. Sometimes we'd make Herc a little bigger than Argus, and that way you could quickly differentiate. Yep, you just slide, slide it over. Yeah. Bridge, Nav. Argus does have thrusters, but it only meters, helps it to spin because it's a super heavy. It looks like north to south current here. It's coming up and over. Is the idea is to you want a vertical wire angle if, so you can spin on your wire. So we weight Argus extremely heavy negative. Problem is it's a wrecking ball when you come to a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Not anchor. a good idea. That's why it's so built in a cage. <laughs> its predecessor, Angus, was even worse. It was designed to crash and survive. Was it really? huh. Angus to Argus.
So we've got a question about how quickly the buildup of this spray paint that Bob was talking about or the ferromanganese crust develops. I think you said, is it millimeters per millions of years, right? Is our right. current thinking for that rate? Yeah, that's that's almost certain. Uh, you know, that's on the rocky surfaces. Um, but you know, we, we do notice, um, so that it depends on the water chemistry, really. Um, in these areas, it might be a little bit faster than that. Uh, in other areas, it might be slower. We know that um, things like cup corals have been dated, uh, carbon dated, from the Southern Ocean um, and also from the Atlantic. Uh, they have very good manganese crusts. It helps preserve the calcium carbonate from dissolution. And uh, the, those you know, can be on the order of you know, tens of thousands of years old. So we know that you know, th there can be kind of discoloration um, that forms on those kinds of time scales. Uh, but it's, it's likely that you know, if, if these animals have been here recently, that the um, rate of precipitation could be faster. Go for Zoom. Wow. Planar Chrysogorgia colony. Or maybe biplanar. Looks like biplanar. So it has these two fans. The what? The branch is very low. Oh, but yeah. The oh, fans I see. They grow parallel to each other. Yeah. Huh. As opposed to the, the true Little planar. Fish. It's like one of the small grenadiers. There's a bunch of these guys down below us here. Uh, they that, like this spot on the wall. Uh, this is There's a um, lot of them. Wow. Uh, wow, you're right. Look at that. <laughs> they keep going. <laughs> yeah, this is this what is, is uh, that Romula gorgia militara species. Oh, okay. Um, We've been seeing a lot of. Yeah, interestingly, you know, further south where I've done a lot of work, uh, we tend to see these primarily on the vertical walls. Um, and we think that they're the same species, but we have some ongoing research to try and see if there's maybe some differences because they typically will also grow on these vertical surfaces, but they're also much smaller and they have a slightly less dense branching pattern. So it could be something different, but it's actively in being investigated. There's yeah, they definitely are sparser branching there than they were before. So that that uh, genus Romula gorgia used to belong to uh, a, a group called uh, Pleuro Pleurogorgia. And Pleurogorgia is still a valid genus. Um, uh, so there's a, still a valid species there. Um, but it, the, the revision was based on some new observations from this area uh, over the past several years and new collections, um, suggesting that it's a totally different genus. Go for Zoom. Looking at that sponge rubble there with all the the brittle stars have discovered it. Oh, yeah. They don't care that that sponge isn't alive. <laughs> yeah. Any port in a storm. Okay, go wide. Actually, probably the dead ones is better, right? Like, I imagine that a sponge has, like, some sort of defense for keeping the too many critters on it. Because they don't, when they're alive, they don't have a ton on them, do they? Or maybe I'm yeah, imagining no, that. You're, you're right. Yeah, sometimes they, they just don't have as many on them. That's a good point. I'm not sure. Steve, are we trying to get a, san a rock sample? Yeah, we have, um, let me see, where are we at? We're, pretty we're, we're right at about that depth. Uh, our depth was 2709. Okay. 
Um, I'm not seeing anything here on the vertical surfaces, so I might want to move to some more moderate slope. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. I'll come up. I'm. So, I think I'm sort of right at the. Yeah. Top of this, right. and I've been looking on the edge, but I can look on the top. We can also move up to the top of the small summit. It's not extremely urgent to get it at this depth. Okay. It's yeah, not, pick your poison. Not that far. Um, it's only 10 meters away, 20 meters vertical. Okay. If you would rather look at the top of this ridge, I can be there. It looks like it's right down the middle of the Argus screen, so it's pretty easy to just move back and forth from the between the yeah. top and the side. Let's... Uh, this has been nice. Let's jump up top and see what's up at the okay. very peak. Sounds good. Um, These sponges so are still falling down somewhere. Top is about 80 meters away, bearing 2, 1, 3. Go ahead and get us up over there. Yeah. Bridge, 2, 1, three. Nav. Is that all dead sponge too, right there? Wow. Yeah. Can we move 50 meters bearing 215? These are some enormous ones. Yeah, that's huge. Can you give me 215 with Argus? Yep. The stock Thank of it you. looks so thick. It's basically my best navigation tool as Argus is heading right now. It almost looks yeah. a little bit fresher than the ones we've seen. Mm. Oh, yeah, we can check that out. Uh, go for zoom. Very you can push in further if you crusty. want. All right, can I pan down to the right to get the base? Oh, yeah, totally. Go wide. There we go. That's where it is. Feel free to direct that shot, Steve, and Steve, if yep. you want. Yeah, yeah, anywhere. It's pretty solid. Cool. Tree trunk. Yeah, no kidding. Although it's pretty low density, so it's not too heavy. Once you drain it out, it shouldn't be that heavy. Okay, let's go wide. after all. We've got a two one five move in now. We do. Excellent. So if, if, if anyone's tuning in, we're just looking at a glass sponge, um, some debris, rubble. I suspect some of this rock here, what looks like rock, is actually sponge rubble. Also, We've, we remember a few days ago we tried to break something that looked like this, and it yeah. kind of broke easily. I suspect there's some imposters in here. <laughs> it does look like it, those long ones again. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it's like overwhelmingly sponge rubble in some of those places. Well, they're coming from somewhere. And uh, if I was following a trail of stony coral rubble, I would say onwards and upwards. Okay. Seems to be like there's more in this area, more rubble at least. Persingid star. Sometimes the persingids are up in the sponges. Oh, there's a sea star right there, purple. Oh Let's yeah, on the rock. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, the cutie.
Nothing will ever take the place of that ravioli star in my heart, though. <laughs> no way. <laughs> the cookie star. Come pay it a visit anytime you want. Oh, yeah, you've got it. Go for Zoom. We'll make this a quick one. Yeah, it's a looks like slime a slime star. star yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, go wide. Oh, there's some trash there, too. Soda can or oil can, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's a slime star. I don't think Argus has quite started its. Not quite, yeah. Its turn yet. What's that, Josh? Yeah, it hasn't. It's got like a big swoop to do. I think you're muted. Yeah, I was busy with other things. <laughs> Got a viewer wondering how long we've been out at sea on this cruise, and we've been out just over a week now. Um, we have a little less than a week to go, so this is about a two-week long cruise, and this is the last cruise of the 2021 expedition season. I believe Nautilus has been out exploring since summer, um, but our 2022 expedition season will start up pretty quickly around February time, so once this expedition season ends, if you go to nautiluslive.org, we will post uh, our next expedition plan on there probably soon into the new year, so you can watch for that. Um, we're currently exploring about 100 miles west of the Hawaiian Islands, and the cruise before this was in a pretty similar location, so Nautilus is planning to stay out in this part of the Pacific probably for the next couple of years to keep exploring this area. Uh, can we take a closer look at this there? I <laughs> knew that was coming. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. I think we saw something similar um, about an hour before lunch. Okay. But I just wanted to confirm now that I have the big screen in front of my eyes here. Go for Zoom. To be, <coughs> excuse me, some sort, of, some sort of planar chrysogorgia. Okay, I should a one more zoom if you can mm -hmm. spare it. Taking on some zoom debt here. <laughs> Amphipods and branches, very, very fine branching. Yeah, it looks so delicate compared to some of the others. Yeah. But so the polyps are out, right? They're not retracted. They are, yeah. Huh. Just looks very fuzzy, feathery. Yeah. Okay. Wide. <laughs> some zoom debt. Do you have what you need there, Steve? Yeah. Okay. Put some coins back in the zoom bank. Let's get them in there. <laughs> so Chrysogorgia of some flavor? Yeah, there's, um, there's quite a number of species of Chrysogorgia in the Pacific, this part of the Pacific Bridge, and the Western yeah. Pacific. There's actually been several new species described over the past several years. Can we do that move again? 50 meters bearing uh, 2 and 5. They have a bit of a complicated way of identifying them there's really no uh, unless we have really good data on you know observations and specimen collections that are paired 
it's really difficult to identify them on the seafloor. Um, a lot of the characters we need to identify are um, sometimes in the intricate branching sequences of the colonies, as well as the sclerite morphologies and, and of course, you know, DNA that we can extract from the specimen. Right. So those, those three things help us to identify it. So it looks like Argus has seen a little more of a wall over to yeah. our left. That's the th I think that's what we just, is that what we just came down a bit? Yeah, maybe. We've got pretty close to the same heading, and I just came down what's okay. sort of sure. over yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Okay. A lot of this stuff looks really solid. Yeah. Still not feeling good about rocks. Rock sample. Yeah. Amalgamated was the word that the previous watch used. Yeah. That's a good word for it. Yeah, not looking super loose. So now if I'm seeing the strike of this be sort of, I think. The strike, and um, what is this? this? Like maybe like this or like this. Like yeah. the, the, you know what I mean? The strike of the slope. Yeah, I guess maybe I'm using strike wrong. Sorry. Um, I think it's like this or like this for strike. If strike is perpendicular to the slope of the slope. Can we yeah. pull the slope pull back to the left here? Okay. I see what you're saying based on your heading right yeah, now. Yeah, just check my heading and yeah. compare it with what uh, I'm getting. Yeah. With that sonar and see if you can figure out what uh yeah. What are you looking are at you? there, Steve? The star up on top. Oh yeah, totally. Let's see if this is the same one we collected earlier. The sun star thing. Not sure. Go for zoom. What do you think? You can go a little tighter. It has six arms. That should make it fairly easy to identify, actually. Um, okay, go wide. Yeah, that, that's a great image. Should be able to do something with that. Great. Okay, I'm smearing out the sonar right now. But uh, yeah, it sort of feels like if yeah, this I think you're right. Kind of the top, we gotta go like one three five. Yeah. One three five. That's what it seems like to me, because Argus has got a steep hill to yeah. the left, and then your when you head now, it seems like we're going across the slope, but it's uphill to our left. Right. So right now I've got the two two five heading, yeah, and it's like exactly on my port side. Yeah. Which puts us yeah, I like one three five. All right. Bridge, Nav. <coughs> Can we change our move to go 50 meters bearing 135? That is correct, thank you.
More of these clusters of the militaris, I think. Yeah, yeah, another good density here. They're definitely happy on these cliffs. Or 30 meters, whichever one. Pardon? You put in 30 meters, but that's fine. Well, you got the bearing right. That's good. Another acrobatic snail. Oh, yeah, these are amazing. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of my dream to get a good zoom on one. I've like never catch them fast enough and then they are like so quick to get out of the frame. It's got a long way to fall. Seriously. I know. It's really going for it. Oh, it just seems like you'd be so dizzy. <laughs> I don't want to get carried away following him. Oh. Uh, a little wider. Maybe I can get him in there. Oh, he's got like a very pearly uh, shell. It's a snail. Uh, what is it? It's amazing. It called common name. Is there it goes. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. The. I remember the scientific name, but I don't remember the common name. The, the genus of those is uh, Gaza, G A Z A, and. So Steve, some viewers have commented that we really haven't seen many fish across really all of our dives. Do we think there are more freely kind of living or swimming organisms around this area generally and they're just not around because of Hercules or they're just not here because we're deep or this part of the ocean is maybe not as suitable for them? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, we are deep. Uh, you know, as, as you see, we're not seeing a ton of fishes across all of the dives we've done so far, especially at the 2,000 meters plus. Uh, 